Chapter 4 of Trixie's Getting Back Our Host by Shadow Raiko. No, not, not again, said Twilight, quoting in terror in her sleep. It was just what Discord put her through, flashing through her mind. Only this time, no matter what she did, nothing helped. Nothing changed anything. Stop. Leave my friends alone, Discord. Please, leave them alone. Twilight shot awake when she fell a hoof on her shoulder. Panting heavily from fear, she looked over to see Trixie looking back at her in concern. Trixie, she said, startled. She went over to see the clock. Midnight, feeling a pang of guilt and awakening to poor Mare in the middle of the night. Sorry. It's fine, Twilight, said Trixie, her voice honest, even somewhat sympathetic. Another nightmare, Trixie guesses. Trixie would have thought a pony like you would have found a way to deal with a mere nightmare in all these books. Twice sighed, lowering her head in sorrow. I've done everything I could think of, she said, her voice a little shaky. Nothing works. She muttered, sick and tired of being tormented by nightmares like this. She looked up, everything she could find, but still couldn't find anything that worked. She was starting to think Discord had put some kind of spell on her. I know they're not real, but I just can't make them stop. Tracy actually gave a sympathetic look. Twilight saw it, she looked conflicted for a moment. Twilight, believe it or not, Trixie may have a solution to your plight. She explained in a thoughtful tone. Twilight pointed for confusion. Was Trixie actually helping her? But still, the possibility of being rid of the horrible nightmares she had been having was rather tempting. Really? She asked, not able to think of much else to ask. Trixie nodded, looking a tad uncertain. Yes, it's quite simple, really. You're not gonna sing, are you? Trixie's eyes widened, looking rather confused. Of course not! Why would you ever ask such a thing? Oh, it's nothing. It just when we were being threatened by a bunch of monster trees in Everfree Forest, Piggy said something like that and burst his socks by Taisley. We got to Twilight. This saw Trixie giving her a raised eyebrow. Nightmare Moon used illusions to try to scare us off. Piggy tends to explain beneficial insights with random musical numbers. All of the house to make cupcakes. Trixie understands. She's actually more confused about the monster trees than seeing. Well, anyway, it's quite simple. Oh, what are you doing? Twilight blinked, telekinetically holding a notebook and quill in front of her. Taking notes. Tracy rolled her eyes slightly at this. A twilight. There's no need to. Actually, I'd stick a thought. Tracy kind of likes that. You may continue. She replied, allowing Twilight to get back to taking notes. As Tracy was saying, when having a nightmare, look for the parts of it that do not make sense. Dreams are by very nature imperfect, because our minds hastily craft the dream world when it begins. So there's always something that tells us it's a falsehood, something that doesn't match up with what we know is or was the reality. Something which has no other explanation apart from being part of a dream. Even if the nightmare takes place in this car's just cryotic world, there's going to be something that's out, finding this a uh, glitch, so to speak. We'll let you know it's a dream or a nightmare. It lets you know it's a dream. You can control it with ease. Are you following Trixie, Twilight? Asked Trixie, falling back into a rather theatrical manner of speaking. Not cool why he's bombastic as her magic show act, but still playing a good bit of energy to her words. As well as hope most at certain points. Twilight nodded hanging on her explanation, taking notes, as he did so. Truthfully, Trixie was pretty fun to listen to when she wasn't talking, doesn't hear herself talk or publicly humiliating ponies. And Trixie actually seemed to be enjoying herself. Yes, please, continue. Good. Now, uh, let's say Trixie was having a nightmare about an encounter with a certain terrifying, monstrous, uh, star cover piece, Trixie said, a little fear warming her way into her voice. Twice saw the poor Merrick give a shudder at a mountain of Ursa. She really couldn't blame the poor girl. Regardless, she was surprised as the mare magically created an image of herself, 
running from her Ursa, similar to the one she created during their original Ursa story at the magic show. Stacy noticed the mayor in the moon was still in her prison, or that her own cutie mark colors were reversed, or that those two dumb cults that ruined her life weren't standing right next to her the whole time. She said, almost shouting at the end. The image is changing to match her words. The last of words about to hit a cowing sniffs and snails on a mallet. Trusty seemed to catch herself and clear her throat, wiping away the last image. Anyway, at that point, Trusty knows she says a nightmare and can take control. So instead of running, she fakes us the air some minor. Uh, no, major? Uh, maybe. Anyway, do you understand Twilight? Twilight nodded, finishing her notes. It actually made sense to some degree. It was right at Twilight's alley. Logic was, of course, on her strong suits. But still, after everything Twilight tried, she was understandably unsure about the method. And Trixie was really good at making it interesting. I never heard of something like that. Does it really work? Has her Trixie awakened screaming at one of those creatures that was trying to eat her? As Trixie, doing her best to maintain her theatrical manner. Twilight blinked and shook her head. No. Well, there you go. Terxie's used to trick since he was a little filly. It works every time. Trust me, Twilight. If it didn't work, Terxie wouldn't get any sleep. <laughs> Replied Trixie, trying to maintain her tone, but giving a yawn. An angry growl came from nearby. Both girls looked over to see a rather cranky spike glaring out from his bed. You're not the only ones not getting any sleep. Sorry, Spike, said Twilight, looking at her assistant sleepishly. Don't look over as Trixie cried back into bed. Trixie, thank you. You're actually a good teacher. You're welcome, Twilight. Thank you as well. A good night, <laughs> replied the tired mare, sleeping her to bed. Twilight was asleep back under her covers, giving a yawn. She really hoped this worked. Trixie snarled, scrubbing her mane for the second time this morning. She pretty much tried everything she could think of. But her mane was the same shade of pink it had been since the males used to bath the previous day, as was her tail. Tracy gave a sigh, gave up on that. Oh well, at least it'll smell like a skunk. She stayed in annoyance, the heart stood still fronted in her memory. No matter how much you love your pet Sally. Oh, Tracy loves how affectionate she can be. And how she is good at making certain commenters who call her Tubby Wubby pay! By the way, good uh, move on not commenting on that. Otherwise, Tracy would have had Sally get you. Hey, hey, hey. Don't worry. We're all cool. Right, Sally? <coughs> As were her own access the previous night, Tracy gave a small sigh of the thought. I never thought Twilight Sparkle and I would ever have anything at all in common, let alone that I'd be willing to help her with the same problem I used to have. Or I actually feel good about it. She muttered, sure. Being a Sarah attention to the point of her audience was actually taking notes felt good, but these the only reason it felt good. Just the only reason she felt really understood. She fought back to her own silver experience that made her sympathetic to Twilight's plight. Trixie, dear, what's wrong? asked the elder unicorn mare, looking down at the little filly of Firefur who was half asleep. Tracy looked up at her with tired eyes. It's nothing, Grandma. I. She said, being interrupted by her own yawn. Oh. Trixie, oh, don't try to hide something from your grandma. She can tell when something is wrong, said her grandmother, pulling the child closer to her. Tracy gave a sad sigh. I've been having lots of nightmares about an Ursa Minor attacking the town and trying to eat me. You poor dear. No wonder you look so exhausted, said the wise old unicorn, nuzzling the child. Want to know a secret to her dealing these kind of dreams? But Daddy and Big Sister say... I know. I know what your Daddy and Sister say. Don't forget, I erase your Daddy from another coat. I know how he is, but I'm teaching you, not helping you. There's a difference. And she'll never admit to it, but I taught your big sister the same thing when she was your age. Tracy got a little confused, then nodded with a sweet smile. All right, Grandma, I'll listen. Her grandmother nodded with a warm smile. 
All right, now, it's pretty simple. When the day starts, your mind crafts a world to take place in. But you wouldn't step up so quickly. There's always a glitch to find. Find a glitch, and the dream is yours to control. Tracy looked at her reflection, finding herself giving a small smile to memory. You need to stop spending so much time around Grandma, or you'll end up just like her, weak and a failure. You don't want that now, do you? Let's turn to a frown quickly. Tracy turned away from the mirror, her head low. Good morning, Trixie, said Twilight, seemingly especially perky as she made her breakfast. Spike already eating some gems. Good morning, said Trixie, blinking in surprise as he descended the stairs. Trixie sees you are in a good mood, Twilight sparkle. Twilight nodded, flowing the food to the table. Yeah, your advice really worked. Once I realized it was a dream, everything was fine. She stayed, setting the table, keeping a rather loud smile on her face. She couldn't help being in such a good mood now that the nightmares that had played her for weeks were over. I haven't had such a good night's sleep in weeks. Yeah, neither have I, added Spike, giving a small nod as he consumed another jam. Even if they guided him up in the middle of the night, it was a relief that Twilight hadn't had a nightmare afterwards to disturb him again, and hadn't had a nightmare at all for that matter. That, and even though he didn't want to admit, her advice had helped him with some bad dreams, too, involving his last birthday. Trixie is glad she could be of assistance, Twilight stated, taking her place at the table quickly. She actually felt happy hearing that it worked. They shook it off as best they could. Trixie! Trixie merely didn't feel like being disturbed every night is all. Tracy explained, doing her best a snooty look to cover herself. Twilight frowned slightly. It's all right, Twilight. Remember how hard it was for you to make friends. She thought, knowing she had been quite the anti-social herself before moving to Pointville. Well, whatever your reason, I really owe you one. Tracy nodded slowly and grinned. There were a great many things that ran through her head at that moment. Twilight, just to clarify, when you say you owe Tracy one... Twilight sighed with an annoyed look. No... I can't ask Princess Celestia to make you the royal court musician. Tracy pouted. Oh well, it was worth a shot. She muttered under her breath. Though truthfully, she kind of felt glad that was the case. And also truthfully, even Trixie didn't know why she did. She certainly wanted to be a royal court musician. Whatever it was, for some reason, asking such a dean didn't seem proper right now. Hey, if she did something like that, does he think Rainbow Dance would be a wonderful by now? asked Spike. Good point. Well, at least we'll tell Turksy one thing. What? The Fluttershy really else there, cockatrice. Twilight nodded. Yeah, it ambushed me and turned me a stone to, on the way to a friend of mine who lives in the Everfree Forest. I think a snail crawled on my eye. Ugh, she said, giving a shudder. This girl was right. But he turned to stone was not fun. Anyway, she so saved a group of feelings from the darn thing and got to turn me back to normal. If it weren't for her, who knows how long it would have been a statue. Tracy's jaw dropped to surprise. Told you so, <laughs> said Spike with a chuckle. Skizzaloo rode her scooter at top speed towards her and the other crusaders' clubhouse, when he's flapping to provi provide propulsion. She couldn't wait for what they were supposed to do today. None of them could. She wouldn't stop for anything. Hey, Scoots! Called a familiar voice. Except that. Scoot was scared to a stop, looking to see Rainbow Dash flying above her. Hey, Rainbow Dash! Called a little filly. It's sad to have her eye, I'll call her f f no matter what the reason. Rainbow Dash descended, flapping her wings one last time to soften her landing. She gave the filly a smile. She could always count on Scootaloo, her number one fan. Hey, could you do me a little favor? Do Rainbow Dash anything? Right. You know Trixie? asked Rainbow seriously. Scootaloo gave a growl. That bully who did that awful stuff to you and Sweet Bill and Apple Blue Sisters? What power? Rainbow Dash nodded. I'm not glad at least that Scootaloo agreed with her. Stay with Twilight. I think she's got everybody else fooled. But not you, right? Rainbow gave a nod. Yeah, not me. I've been keeping an eye on her. But I got some work to do to prepare for the storms we're going to be getting for that tropical storm. You and the other crusaders are going to rarities, right? Scootaloo died quickly. Yeah, 
I'm gonna meet up with Apple Bloom and head over there. Why? Well, Tracy's work got a job working there today. Might keep an eye on for me while you're there and telling me what she's up to? School didn't hesitate at all and nodded quickly. Of course, we can put the ass and Sir Apple Bloom will too. After all, Trixie hurt her, her pigs too. Rainbow smart and ruffled the little pigs this mane. I knew I could count on you. Thanks, she stated, to flap her wings back into the air. See you later, Scoots, she called, giving a salute and flying off to her job. School gave a salute. I got a missing for Rainbow Dash! And who knows? Maybe I'll get a spy key mark! She said, wondering what one would look like briefly before remounting her scooter and taking off for the clubhouse. Twilight. Trixie doesn't like this, said Trixie in a nervous tone as they stood outside Carousel Boutique. Twilight looked back at Trixie. Why not? Trixie looked at Twilight like it was obvious. Dizzy pointed to her pink mane and tail. Twilight gave a slightly annoyed sigh. Trixie, Verity's not going to make fun of your mane. He's not like that. Twilight. Turksy knows you think it the best of your friends. But do not forget, the most interaction she's had with this unicorn was turning her mane into a disgusting green mess in front of the entire town! Tracy, Rarity's a lot of things, but one thing she never do is insult some pony's bad hair day. Spike Nine, riding on Twilight's back. Yeah, Rarity isn't like that. Hey, wait, if you could do that to Rarity's mane, how come you can't just use magic to fix your hair? Trixie sighed, gave a slightly embarrassed look. Trixie didn't exactly study that kind of magic beyond how to make some ponies hair a mess. Her main reason for knowing it was to humiliate ponies in her act, so she never saw a reason to learn more of that particular type of magic. Well, don't worry, I'm sure that Rarity won't make fun of you, said Twilight, reasserting a voice that she could manage. And if you don't want to, there's Full City to Cases Muscle Falls with Pinkie Pie. Hmm. Oh, uh, what kind of foals? A unicorn filling in a Pegasus cult. Unicorn and Pegasus foals, said Trixie, giving a consideration. Are they in that state? Sporadic magic sources and periods of flight and six kicking in? Yeah. And Pelkeg is a really strong little cult, explained Spike, looking over to the mayor. Trixie will pass. Besides, her nose still hasn't recovered from yesterday's skunk incident. She prefer not to have to change dirty diapers. Tracy added, having a disgusting face at the thought. Spike blinked and eyed. There was I say this, but I agree with Twilight and that Trixie and that one, Twilight. Twilight nodded. Considering I spent yesterday cleaning up a stink bomb, I know how you feel. She so replied, giving a likewise disgusted face. Besides, I think Pinky has it covered. Trixie did give a sigh of defeat. Trixie will work for Rarity. But if Rarity makes fun of her mane, Trixie will say she told you so. Repeatedly. And at length. Twilight sighed and rolled her eyes. Did open the door slowly with her magic. It blinked to confuse it at the side sigh. Now, Applejack, you must see the need for proper attire for such a gathering. Pleaded Rarity in an annoyed tone. I just was wrong with Al Aldorius. Asked Applejack, rather sharply, glaring back at the unicorn. I don't need no bug but the guy I'll dust to show off some apples. Twilight to Sweet Bell, who was simply watching from nearby. What's going on? Yeah, and Applejack are fighting over some fairy care lot, explained the unicorn filly, looking a little upset. She was no stranger to, do, to this, but the damn means she liked it. Applejack, this is a counter not fair, not just any old country fair, replied Rarity, important to her tone. You had no problem dressing a proper for the Grand Galloping Gala or Tyre's birthday party. Uh, girls, said Twilight, trying to get their attention as Trixie nearly watched, somewhat amused for the sidelines. That's cause those were big bands of gatherings at Carolot Ballroom. No but the farmer probably showing out the crops. Girls, but it's still in Canterlot. There are going to be tons of important ponies there, and the dust is all going to be Canterlot ponies. They will expect you to look your best. Rarely. It's just a farm show. Like, what? And so the apples. Look, look out, matter how I'll do. Applejack! They're kind of like ponies, Applejack. They expect every pony to look their best all the time. Girls! Well, this is bloody doom. Twice I sigh annoyance as the two continue to argue. So you go to Sleep Bell. Sleep Bell, would you please get their attention? 
Hayes. He has, seriously. Tracy Hayes is her eyebrows and Philly Nine. Twilight, seeing Twilight and Spike covered your ears. Ooh, what's going on? Sweet Bell inhaled deeply. Sis! Applejack! Twilight wants you! She screamed at the top of her lungs. Once Twilight got the two arguing ponies' his attention, Tracy just stared wide eyed in shock, ears ringing before the shock shook her. Head and clear it. My! Tracy didn't exactly expect such a filly to have a loud voice. She stated. Looking over to see Sweetie Spell smiling like a little angel. In fact, she probably saw you with a halo. Spike chuckled, uncovering his ears. Just wait till we get all three of them together. Tracy's eyes wide in surprise. Oh, wait. Three of them. Twine nodded to Sweetie Bell with a smile. Thank you, Sweetie Bell. She said, giving the filly a grateful look before looking to her two friends and giving them a small glare. Applejack scratched her head in embarrassment, while Rarity gave her the same sigh. I'm sorry for being so rude, Applejack. But I was not joking. Encounter lot appearance is important. The ponies there judge you heavily on based on how you look. I only want to help make sure the best and affair you possibly could. I know how important it is to you and your family. Applejack nodded, lowering her head in embarrassment. Well, yeah, I'm sorry too. I guess it was just playing a bit stubborn. You don't care a lot whole better than I do, after all. You were able to make me a good dress before. I reckon you could do it again. Just nothing too girl, all right? Ready night, giving a small smile. I'll do my best, Applejack. But for now, Tuxie has come for her job, and we have work to do. I will meet you on your farm after I am done with work for the day. I was like, nod, hanging out or not. All right, I'll be slowing you. Ready night, double to sleep out. Sweetie Belle, my sewing glasses are on the table in my bedroom. Would you be a dear and carefully fetch them for me? Sweetie Belle gave an enthusiastic nod. Sis, yes, yes, I'll be right back! exclaimed the filly, running off. Any opportunity to actually help Rarity, as opposed to cause a dynamic mess, was something she didn't want to mess up. Be careful! Tracy blinked, watching A.T. leave before looking to Twilight. Oh, uh, does that happen often? Is those too bickering like that? Twilight nodded shortly. Kind of. Rarity and Applejack have different opinions on a lot of things. How do you put up with it? Tracy asked, a bit confused as she directed the question to both mayor. These six used magical terms that literally ran on friendship. So you expected that to be a more friendly. Applejack and I may not always agree on things, but they know Applejack is a true friend. Severity, already got several fast dresses in the position near sewing machines. She'll always have my back when I need it, and I shall always have hers. Twenty nine in agreement, looking to Trixie. Friends fighting doesn't mean they're not friends. It just means they got a problem to work out. It's like I told Discard. Friendship isn't always easy, but it's worth it no matter what. Trixie looks confused about this for a second, and then she looks sorrowful. It must be good to have ponies that care so much about you. Why so frown. Trixie, is something wrong? She so asked a concerned voice. Oh, nothing. Nothing is wrong. Trixie was just lost in thought is all. She so answered Trixie quickly. Before looking to Rarity, desperate to change the subject. What job will Trixie be doing? Rarity looked at Trixie, focusing solely on her for the first time since her arrival. Well, I need a little... Oh dear, what, Trixie, whatever happened to your main and tail? Tracy sighed, having expected this. Tracy, er, she had a rather unfortunate encounter with a skunk yesterday. She said, blessing with embarrassment, before praising herself for what she preferred seemed to be inevitable. Oh, that's quite unfortunate. The tree that's used in white hair just do not mix. Severity, sympathetic in tone. Well, I'll just have to do something to fix that while die. Tracy blinked a complete shock. See what? Twilight gave Tracy a reassuring look. Tracy. Rarity's the element of generosity, remember? It's what she does. Rarity and I giving a simple, <laughs> quite right. She stated, That is, if I may do you the service, Trixie. I'm not pitying you. Pink does class is hard to be with your coat. It doesn't know your color at all. And I am a fascinator after all. It is my duty to make ponies look fabulous. Trixie hated. She tried everything she knew. Was it wrong to let somebody whose job was fastened to do a job that was theirs to do? And she'd rather not walk around Pawneeville with Pink Mane if she could help it. Not that Pink Mane's a problem. 
that if Faraday was going to try to take revenge, she might as well get it over with while her hair was a mess anyway. Alright, you may try, Turex, he supposes, she said, closing her eyes. She felt the telltale feeling of magic rippling through her mane and tail. She carefully opened her eyes to look in the mirror, fully expecting her to find the same messy green disaster she made rarities. Instead, finding her mane and tail not only in their proper color, in fact, she must have mistaken much better than ever. Tracy looked at Rarity in complete shock. You... you actually did it. Of course. Well, why would I ever not? Asked Rarity, giving a jealously confused look. Why... oh, why not? Tracy asked, completely shocked. I called your main rightness, goes you into a raid contest, turned your hair into a disgusting green mess, humiliated you in front of the entire town, and then bragged about doing it! And before that, I publicly humiliated two of your best friends! Which you also bragged about, says Bike simply. Looking through a pile of discarded gems, Rarity set aside for him. Normally, she let him have the gems he couldn't make use herself. EXACTLY! Yes, you did all of that, said Rarity, giving a small glare. Was he turned to smile? But I would never really defy another mare's mane, especially not that of a friend. Tracy's eyes went wide in shock. Friend? 